It's a whole lot of unrighteousness in the black and white churches. A whole lot of unrighteousness in the black and white churches. When you look at all the social social media news, you see all the stories of black preachers and white preachers going down, going in prison, getting deleted. over crime, being involved in crime. For a man to stand up in the pulpit and directly call out a certain demographic of people, church people, like he did over politics. That's all it's about, over politics. It's anger. It's not righteous rebuke. It's anger. He ain't never... In order to be right, you can't pick and choose what you want to rebuke and call out when you see an opportunity. It's not like you living in a in a, in a place where you have no access to the media. You have no ears. You don't hear what's going on in the preaching world. You see just as much sin and you hear about just as much sin going on in the white church as much as you hear about the black churches. We living in a world where the church world has always been riddled with sin from the pulpit on down. But it's more so, it must look bad or look worse when you have preachers that are living in the dungeon in sin. I've been paying attention to the swaggers. I pay attention to all churches, all the preaching channels. I pay attention to everything. Never have I heard all sin being called out and preached against directly. You're going to wait till politics roll around. Sit up in the pulpit reading a love letter to your presidential candidate. looking very similar to a cult member. Ain't no way in the world if if, if that were my son in the pool. Ain't no way in the world I would let him sit up in the church and do something like that. You're going to recite a love letter to a presidential candidate. You should never be that close to man. I understand your father. Write a letter to your father. Do you write a letter to another man, another wicked man that you know is ungodly? Yet you gonna write a letter and read it in the pulpit of the Lord? What type of foolishness is that? So overwhelmed by a man, a sinful man, you gonna ignore his sin try to paint him as being such a whole anointed person of God when he anything but just cannot hide what's really the issue just can't hide it no he didn't say nothing wrong but his rebuke 
was unfair all the way around. Ain't never been known for rebuking anything outside of poverty. You got the whole entire Bible. You got the whole society to rebuke. But you never did it. You got to re rebuke the Republicans as well as the Democrats. You got to rebuke the whites and the blacks. You can't be selected about what you rebuke and who you rebuke. You got to rebuke all unrighteousness, including yourself for living on dirty money. You got to rebuke your daddy. You got to rebuke everybody else, the copelands, all the 50 rich preachers in this country who have made their living off of preaching. You got to rebuke all of them. You got to rebuke. If not, you, you nothing but a hypocrite. Democratic preachers and Republican preachers, conservative preachers, whatever you want to blame them, all get in trouble. All are really in sin. 90%, 80% of the church world today is submerged in sin. Black, white, Democrat, Republican. All of them. The preachers are going down every day, all the time, because of sin. They see it being uncovered. A lot of them conservative preachers live double lives. A lot of them commit suicide after they have been uncovered to be living a double life. I think one senator recently committed suicide. He was a preacher. Matter of fact, about five months ago, a senator, I think he was out of Alabama, a senator, a congressman or something, a white man, conservative, pro-life, against homosexual. He was all that. He was found out to be a cross-dresser. When that news came out, broke on, he committed suicide. That, that happened earlier part of this year. But you only find reason to rebuke the black church and it's over politics. Is that a righteous rebuke? No, it's not. Got the nerve to try to condemn people for not voting and then want to then want to force people to vote for who you think they ought to vote for. I would like to be able to talk directly to them and, 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 and ask them a few questions. Who gave you the authority to condemn people for not voting then want to force them to vote for who you want them to vote for? Don't get no baby killers in the off world. This world is condemned. You ain't gonna get no holy people. Y'all had a vice president that was holy. Donald Trump tre treated that man all kind of ways. And you saying conservatives no doubt turned on that man when he refused to help Donald Trump win. Y'all never came out and said Donald Trump was wrong about anything during the last election. Y'all would never say he was wrong about anything. That big fat lie that he told about being cheated, you would think at some point y'all would have came out and said, no, nah, yeah, he lied. He was wrong. We forgive him. We still going to support him. But he was wrong. That's how you be in the middle. But you want to stand back and be judgmental, point the finger at 
to other people while you are in the thick of sin yourself and supporting sin. Ain't no way you can justify that. You can stand up in a pool up here and holler all you want. If I was anywhere close to your church, I'd be standing right there waiting till you calm down and ask you a few simple questions. Have you ever worked a day in your life? Have you ever went out there and had a job? And, and how do you get around those scriptures that say you must work? You can't live on that money your daddy raised. You seen it. You ain't dodging. You taking part in his dirty deeds. You taking part in your, what your daddy did by living on that money. Ain't no, ain't nobody in this in in this world gonna convince me that I'm wrong when I see the scriptures talking directly about preachers and money. I dare anybody come and tell me I'm wrong. I got too many scriptures showing me and telling us, warning us, warning the preachers about preaching for money. Dirty dogs come to make merchandise of the people. That's all they in it for. They done got 50 rich and still begging. Still running the game. Still running the pimp game. Still running the con game on the people. Yet, ain't doing nothing themselves to give to the ministry. You can sit on radio and TV and say, I'm working in the ministry every day, every night. That ain't nothing. You ain't getting out there doing leg work. You ain't doing, you, you're not getting out there doing the, the work of the ministry. You ain't doing nothing. You ain't doing anything. Your works is not being recognized or not going to be recognized by God. A preacher walking around in expensive suits every day, walking around as if, as if, if he's a, a professional businessman, you don't represent God, you represent yourself. The apostles walk, went around dirty. I ain't saying you got to go around dirty like you and have like we living in an uncivilized world, but still you run walking around with suits on every day. What that says about you? This is what the Democrats and the Republican preachers. Every day they walk around with suits on expensive shoes and stuff like that. What that say about a preacher? You ain't representing Jesus. You're not a servant of God. You're a servant of self. A servant of self. I watch the news. I keep up what's going on in the church world. I see how these preachers are going down left and right. Left and right. Uh, quite a few of them in Texas went down this year. Ted Hager. Uh, uh, what's the one over there in, uh, in Virginia? Got that school. His daddy died in his office a few years ago. He was a, 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 a Bush supporter. Jerry Farwell, that's his name. Jerry Farwell Jr. Got caught up in a sex scandal. Sin. Sin. All these conservative preachers go down, been going down over sin, but yet you only find but you yet you yet you sit up and only rebuke the black church over politics. You shouldn't be that close to politics. You can preach against, you're supposed to be able to preach against both sides. Call out both sides, see, without hesitation. God is no respectable person. You can't 
you can't sh shield one side and expose the other side. You ain't fit. You not fit. You ain't, you not of Jesus. You ain't in the ministry of Jesus Christ. You in the ministry of self. Nothing but self. That's all it's about, self. Stand up in the pulpit and read a love letter and come to tears over some dirty man, some filthy man. All of us are filthy. I'm not talking about him in that way. I'm just saying filthy flesh. I'm going to say it like that. Because the Bible already deemed us to be nothing but filthy, dirty flesh. We are nothing. Step in the poor pit and read a love letter to another man like that. That's the Lord's house. Should nobody be glorified in there but the Lord. Leave politics out of the sanctuary. Right side politics, left side politics should be left out of the sanctuary. That should be just a personal thing. People gonna vote. A lot of people believe it's a sin against God to vote, which I believe, but people still do it. So therefore, ain't nobody justified in using that Bible to try to condemn people for voting or not voting. That's a personal thing. All of them, neither one of them represent God. All of them have policies that don't line up with God. All of them have wicked policies. Some of them, a lot of them have good policies. But try to pull it on policies for an excuse to support sin, that's blasphemy. I just tell you, that's blasphemy. Donald Trump got some wicked deeds. Him and Marjorie Taylor Greene, the conservative part. Donald Trump got a lot of stuff he want to do that would benefit him and his rich billionaire buddies. And it don't include the poor folks. Not in a positive way. It, it, it includes the poor people in a negative way, like he already did. Gave them rich folks that made the tax break. He didn't, that was his first, that's the first thing he signed into law. That was the first package he signed. Giving them that break. They don't care no about the poor. Then you gonna step. Then he. Then then Donnie gonna have a nerve stand up in the poor pit and talk about Joe Biden economics. Yeah, it really worked, did it? Really, Y'all can't afford to buy this, like like you know, like you really know, and like you really care. Like you really know how it feel. And like you really care that people are broke, but you study taking in money. Y'all study collecting money off the poor people. Want to talk about Joe Biden, but you study taking donations. Y'all ain't stopped that yet. All these years, y'all still taking up money. Y'all still collecting money from the people. Call me a lie. Call that a lie. 